But let me switch here now. You wrote a book called The Workbook of Spiritual Disciplines. I read that book when I was at a turning point in my life. And I remember going in through in one of the disciplines was the practice of solitude. And I remember the transformative moment that came out of one of the disciplines from that book where I went off to an isolated spot and I spent uh, like a day before the Lord without any kind of uh, input. There was no phone. There was no computer. There was no access to people. I was by myself deliberately on purpose to be present to God after I read your chapter on solitude. And oh, it changed, it changed chapter life. one. Well, you read it. You wrote a chapter on the practice of solitude. Yes, yes. And that practice was something I'd never done before. Because hmm. yeah, you know, in those days, I was a single man, and I was alone enough. Thank you very much. I would like to be in company when I could. But the the, the thrust of your chapter was that being alone is one thing; practicing solitude in the presence of God is another. And I I had a, an urgent prayer need in front of me. And I went off to a, to a wilderness location, actually, where nobody was around. And I made sure that I had whatever I needed to make sure that I could pray, pray for the day. And I spent the entire day in the presence of God without anybody knowing, without any kind of access to a phone, without anything, no radio, nothing, just solitude, silence, stillness. And in those days, my paper Bible and my journal. And as a result... At the end of the day, something changed. I can't describe if there was a moment. I can only tell you that my attitude toward the circumstance was fundamentally ch changed mm. after that day of prayer. So, so describe, describe the disciplines that you name in that book called The Workbook of Spiritual Disciplines. Well, uh, of course, solitude is one of them. And uh, David, I... <laughs> I, I think it's one of the most neglected and one of the most needed uh, spiritual disciplines. Yes. Uh, but it but it needs it needs to be that it it needs to be a spiritual discipline, and we can spend time alone, as you mentioned, uh, without it being with with God and intentionally uh, with God. And uh, the, uh, I, I hate to put it, I have hes hesitation putting it this way. It, it's not a, it's not an isolated discipline. Uh, it, it is an isolated discipline, but it, but it needs to be in the context of our seeking to be disciplined Christians because what we're seeking is an intimate relationship with the Lord. And those occasions when uh, that, uh, that intimacy can be pronounced uh, and responded to because of the needs that we have and the concerns that are ours. And, and I think if we, if we're, uh, I, I have difficulty saying this the right way, David. If we're if we're spiritually disciplined, uh, a particular discipline is natural at different times within our life. Uh, I believe that we have to deliberately practice the the kind of discipline I'm talking about when I talk about solitude. Uh, we we can practice prayer, we can practice uh, scripture reading, uh, we can practice generosity. We can we can practice those other disciplines that I talk about in in, in just kind of an ongoing way. Uh, but you 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 have to be deliberate, very deliberate about solitude. You you have to choose a time when you're going to spend three or four hours or whatever uh, just with the Lord, uh, because I think that's what solitude as a, as a discipline really is. And all our other disciplines uh, prepare us for that. I mean, uh, my wife and I meet together almost every morning 
uh, to pray and share together. Uh, and those times uh, and what we do during those times together really feed what I do when I have a three or four hour retreat somewhere in a park in the late afternoon uh, because it, 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 my other disciplines inform and enable my discipline of solitude to be a spiritual discipline rather than just being by myself. Yes. Well, that was the whole point of that chapter. And I'd had lots of time to myself because in those days I was a single man. I didn't have a family, didn't have a wife. And I was, I, honestly, I had this need to be with people because I was alone, right? So <laughs> so you'd, you'd invite them over or you'd go and do a special at the church or whatever. But the whole idea of coming apart just because you wanted to come apart on your own to encounter guidance, the leadership of the Lord, to, just to be present to him or to praise him or whatever. That was new thinking. And it, it did elate, enable, 